This is Collaborative Code with NX. My name is Brandon Roberts. You can follow me on Twitter at Brandon T. Roberts. I tweet about funny gifts. I talk about sports and I just have fun in general there. So go ahead and give me a follow. I work as a developer advocate at Narwhal where we help large companies build applications at scale using the NX open source build framework. I'm also a good Google developer expert in Angular and a maintainer on the NGRX project. So for this talk, I wanted to cover like what monorepos are and the benefits of using them. I'll talk about what NX is and how it drives monorepos. And I'll talk about how NX promotes collaborative code across applications and teams within a monorepo. So a monorepo is a single Git repository that holds the source code for multiple, all your multiple applications and libraries. And this could include all of your applications and libraries if you scale it up into, across your entire organization. Along with any tooling that goes along with them, such as miscellaneous scripts, documentation, and more. So some of the benefits of monorepos are shared code and visibility. You can reuse validation code, UI components, and types across the code base. Atomic changes, where making changes, you can make changes across boundaries of these applications without coordinating these across multiple repos. Developer mobility. If there's anything you want to have in a large code base as a consistent way of doing things, whether it be building and testing applications, even if you have different tools and technologies, maybe you're migrating from one uh, stack to another, you still want to have some consistency there. And a single version of all third-party dependencies. This reduces inconsistencies between applications and keeps less actively developed applications up to date because you're moving them all, as far as the package versions go, moving them all at the same on the same pace and version. So what is NX, as, as I mentioned earlier in the talk? Well, NX is a smart, extensible build framework. It drives monorepos doing more than just code co-location, where you're just putting all your code in one repository and not providing any additional tooling. So it provides that additional tooling to run your monorepo efficiently and effectively. It provides a powerful CLI that gives you a, a command line interface to drive your monorepo and also integrates with modern tooling that you're used to with modern web, web development. And we'll talk about how all those things kind of fit together further in the talk. So NX is smart. So it is smart in a few ways that helps you build, as I said, multiple applications and libraries together. So let's take a look at the Milton model for NX and the ways that it helps you. So NX has a Milton model around a few concepts that allow you to efficiently drive your monorepo. It has a project graph, which it uses for code and that is a result of code analysis, a task graph for running targets or tasks. Uh, it's metadata driven. So this allows you to integrate with uh, tooling and provides other analysis uh, that can be integrated. There's affected commands where you're running code against only running certain projects against certain co against code changes and computation caching, which helps you to store previously run computations to for based on the state and the changes that you currently have. So a project graph is used to reflect the source code in your repository and all the external dependencies that aren't authored in your repository, such as Webpack, React, Angular, and so forth. So your monorepo is built, like I said, built up all this, of all the source code. So you have multiple applications that are made up, um, made up in the monorepo and libraries. And it builds this graph based on those uh, based on those things. So the project graph consists of your applications, libraries, your global configuration, 
and all that is used uh, when calculating that graph. So each time that is done, the project graph is cached, so you immediately can retrieve that information uh, through uh, subsequent runs. But every time you make a change to your your repo that affects one of those different areas, uh, it takes what your current graph was and runs some analysis on it, and that produces a new project graph. Uh, that so your project graph is always up to date with those dependencies in your uh, mono repo. Next up is the task graph. Now NX uses the project graph to create a task graph. Anytime you run a command or a task, uh, NX creates this task graph and then executes the task in that graph. In some cases, these tasks can be run in parallel. This example shows application one, app two, and lib uh, and lib1, which are independent of each other in testing, so they can be run in parallel. NX is also metadata driven, so everything in NX comes with metadata to enable tool ability, such as default values, validations, auto completion work, and more are all defined in a JSON schema instead of code. So this provides a way to statically analyze uh, that schema and is provides more integrations along with that. So that metadata is used by NX itself. It's also used for GitHub integrations. If you're using IDE such as WebStorm or even VS Code, it allows you to take advantage of that. So this is just an example of a VS Code integration provided by NX Console, which is the GUI for NX providing you all the same integrations that the CLI gives you in addition to a nice interface around that. And it's driven through that same schema that is defined in JSON. As I mentioned, NX comes with many commands you can use, but here are a few, a few of the main, main ones. There's NX generate command, NX serve, NX build, NX test, NX lint. And these are just a few of the common ones. As we mentioned, you want to have some consistency there in what you are, uh, in consistency, consistency for your developers in these common commands. But you can also define your own commands or targets against your uh, configuration, such as a deploy uh, command that you can have consistently for how you deploy each one of your applications or libraries in your mono repo. So the modern tooling including uh, uses TypeScript which support for um, TypeScript projects or vanilla JavaScript projects. I also use storybook integration for design systems using Jest for running unit tests Cypress for end-to-end -end tests, and ES Lint for code checks. And all this is included out of the box. Now, before I mentioned the affected commands, I want to talk about the things that, some of the things that NX provides. So as your workspace grows, retesting and re, retesting all the projects just becomes too slow and unmaintainable. If you're just running all your tests uh, every time a change is um, added. So to address this in your mono repo, NX implements code change analysis to get the minimum set of projects or a task that need to be done. So how does it work? So when you run use the NX commands, one of the main NX affected command, NX looks at the files that have changed in your PR look at the nature of the change and uses, uses that information to figure out the list of projects in the workspace that can be affected. Here we have changes to application one. Now based on the project graph, only, the applicate, only app one is affected by the changes made. So it would only be the, it would only need to be the thing that gets retested. So library one and application one wouldn't you wouldn't have to run those tests. So you're already running it more, running more efficiently. 
So here we have changes to library one. So app one and, lib and app two depend on library one. So those would also need to be retested. So other things like platform wide changes will be another example that could trigger retesting or rebuilding your applications and libraries. But even then, NX intelligently figures that out for you. Knowing what and when to run certain tasks is only part of the picture though. If you've run these tasks previously, then there's no reason to run them again against the same set of files. So there's the first part of it where we have affected commands. Uh, and then the second part is the computation caching. And this is where NX uses, uh, provides this functionality. So NX uses computation caching by looking at what you, what you've run against a certain set, against which set of changes that are currently in the code base and alongside with some environmental information. And that information can be configured manually uh, if you need to provide additional information for the caching strategy. So computation caching happens at two levels. So you have computation caching is local first. So let's take a look at uh, run a scenario where I run a build for a particular project. So I have my local machine and I run a build for that particular, run a build for a particular project in the workspace. So if I run that same computation twice, uh, that computation is cached locally. The artifacts that were produced are cached and it's on my local machine. So if I run those again, no matter how many times I run those, we already know based on the information that we don't need to run that computation again. So that computation is cached locally, but that cache can be distributed. So let's take that cache and move it to a, a central location. So NX provides you the mechanism to distribute that cache um, so now when we can read and write from that cache from my local machine, as well as from the centrally hosted place. Now when another coworker or developer brings changes that are checks out the changes that I've already done, they have their local cache, but they can also read from the global cache. And if they run those same changes, same run that same those same changes against uh what's currently in the repo then they'll get those artifacts that are replayed in place and this happens cache extends to other developers as well so you can imagine this ex can extends to your entire organization where each machine can read and write from the cache uh, performing these computations and sharing them across each level. So NX as a build framework has first class support for React, Angular, uh, Node, Next.js, and more. And this also gives you automatic upgrades to the latest version of frameworks and tools. So NX is also extensible through plugins. As we mentioned before, you have the core set of uh, ecosystems that are mentioned there and extensible through plugins and NX plugins are NPM packages that provide two main sets of functionality uh, with being generators and executors. So these generators automate changes to the file system. Uh, anytime you, as I mentioned before, when I show the NX generate uh, command, when that is invoked, you are invoking, invoking a generator. Now these are written in vanilla JavaScript. They can be used to create and update applications, modify configurations, delete files, uh, and these can be applied to applications, libraries, components, and more. Then there's executors. Executors define how to perform an action on the project. So anytime you run NX run or NX test or serve or build 
test, like a, as I mentioned, or Lint. These are actions that are defined using executors. And these run against applications and libraries also. So how does NX help you collaborate with others in your code base? It does this in a few primary ways by allowing you to do a few tasks in a seamless and straightforward way. And this is allowing you to generate, uh, reuse, and rerun or not rerun certain tasks. So let's take a look at the command to create a new NX workspace with a Next.js app. You run this command, follow the prompts, and pick an application name. I'm going to use dashboard for this example. I serve the app and you get, this is what you see in the browser, a newly generated uh, Next.js application with end-to-end -end tests, unit tests, uh, and linting all built in and integrated right out of the box. Now you can use this to generate other pages for the dashboard application, such as the home page. You can also generate libraries to share across your workspace. This is done using the NX CLI as I mentioned before, or NX console, but here I'm using this to generate a library of shared components. So generating components is done in the same way. Generate a footer component inside the shared components library. So to as after using the footer in the dashboard application, we can bring up the dependency graph that shows the relationships between the applications and libraries in the NX workspace. So next, we'll, whether you want to create, generate a new React app or another Next.js app, we can do that with the same NX generate command. So here I'm generating a blog app, another application uh, named blog, and now let's say I reuse the footer in both applications. Well, NX uses that code analysis and builds that project graph. So now we have an updated dependency graph view that's based on the project graph. So we can see the relationships between the two apps that use that same shared footer. So we're, we've gone through generating and or reusing those, uh, generating new applications and libraries, reusing those across, reusing shared libraries across applications. And now we go to where you can rerun or not rerun certain tasks. And this goes back to where we talked about computation caching before. As an example, so we run a task based on a set of changes, the inputs and outputs are captured. So here I'm running unit tests for the blog application. So if I run the same command twice with no changes, the second time I get the cache output. So you don't have to pay the penalty of executing tasks because the computation output is cached and returned, replayed and returned to you instantly. And as I mentioned before, this is, happens locally on your machine and can be distributed and available to scale across your team and organization. So to recap, we talked about monorepos and the benefits of those and how NX drives monorepos. NX is a smart extensible build framework and NX provides tools to promote an environment of collaboration and sharing between applications and libraries using these three main areas, using generating, reusing, and rerunning or not rerunning. Thank you. Hey, it's Joe Eames with ng-conf. If you like that video, be sure to click subscribe either here, or here, or somewhere over here. And if you're looking for something more, here's another video for you to watch here or, or there or somewhere.